Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. The Intentions of the Holy Father for the month of June For the abolition of torture We pray that the international community may commit in a concrete way to ensuring the abolition of torture and guarantee support to victims and their families. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes you this morning. And as we prepare ourselves to spend this time with Jesus, as we place ourselves in the hands of Jesus, let us also place at His feet all our worries, all our difficulties. Let us tell Him, everything that is troubling us. In this way, we will be able to experience a sense of relief as when we share with Jesus, we know that He will take care of everything. But more important, it is necessary for us to become aware of all the blessings that the Lord has bestowed on us. Many times, because of our busy schedules, we are not aware of this. And as a result, we don't pay attention to the small things that happen in life. Small things which yet could be indications from God. And that is why we need to take time off and look at every moment of our life. Understand the plan of God for us. It is only then that we will be able to orient ourselves towards His plan. And therefore let us take a few moments and reflect on our lives. And let us be grateful to God for all that He has done for us, particularly for the blessings and the graces that He has bestowed on us. First and foremost, let us thank Him for the gift of life. We thank Him for the various talents, abilities that He has given us. We also thank Him for the people in our lives that have contributed in so many ways to our well-being. Lord, we thank You for our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who have played a very important role in our lives. Lord. It is through these individuals that you have guided us 
and you have molded us. In other words, we have become who we are because of their hard work, time and dedication. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for their presence in our lives and we pray that they may be blessed in abundant ways. And my dear friends, now let us reflect on Psalm 44. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall reflect in detail looking at certain important aspects of the psalm. Now Psalm 44 is a psalm of lament and it is attributed to the sons of Korah. Now we will see that the psalm will begin with a declaration of God's past faithfulness to Israel, particularly in giving them victory over their enemies in the conquest of the promised land. However, we see that the psalmist laments that God has apparently abandoned them in their current struggles despite their faithfulness to him. We see that this is sometimes what we also experience in our lives. We all face challenges, we all encounter difficult situations. And sometimes we may wonder, in spite of doing everything right, still nothing works out. And here we find ourselves having this experience of abandonment. The same thing is also experienced by the psalmist. And we will see how he responds to it. In short, we can say that Psalm 44, being a psalm of lament, it speaks about the struggles that the people of God experience in times of trouble. At the same time, we also see that it is a reminder that even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of persecution, we can hold fast to our faith in God and that we can trust in his mercy and salvation. The faith that the psalmist has in God is like a model. And this is indeed something that all of us can follow even in our struggles, trusting that God will deliver us and bring us through to the other side. Now let us read the psalm and try to see what thought touches us. The psalm begins, We have heard with our ears, O God, our ancestors have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. And here we see that the first verse itself starts with the psalmist expressing his love and loyalty to God and how he has heard of all the great deeds that the Lord has done for the people in the past. Now we see that the psalmist will go ahead and recount that Israel's conquest of the promised land and this we will see in verses 2 and 3 which go like this. You with your own hand drove out the nations but them you planted, you afflicted the peoples but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land nor did their own arm give them victory but your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance for you delighted in them. And here we see that in these two verses, the psalmist uh, gives God credit for their military success. The psalmist speaks of how God was their hope and their glory and how their trust in him gave them victory over their enemies. Now in the next verses, we see that the psalmist will then shift the focus from the past to the current situation. Let's have a look. You are my king and my God. You command victories for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes. Through your name we tread down our assailants. For now in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put to confusion those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually and we will give thanks to your name forever. 
Now, in verse 4 to 8, we see that the psalmist speaks of how God has rejected them and allowed them to be defeated by their enemies. And here we can see a sense of abandonment, something that all of us experience in those difficult moments when nothing seems to be going according to plan, in those moments where everything seems to be an impossible challenge. And the psalmist declares that in spite of all this, they have not abandoned their faith in God. On the contrary, uh, they have been made a reproach among their neighbors. They have become a laughing stock and people mock them for their trust in God. And this is another familiar sight which many would experience. That sometimes people do tend to mock us when things do not go. Now, we see that the psalmist then continues to plead his case before God in verses 9 to 16, which we will now read. Yet, you have rejected us and abased us and have not gone out with our armies. You have made us turn back from the foe and our enemies have gotten spoiled. You have made us like sheep for slaughter and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a trifle, demanding no high price for them. You have made us the thought of our neighbors, the derision and scorn of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughing stock among the peoples. All day long, my disgrace is before me, and shame has covered my face. Now here we see that the psalmist asks God, as to why he has abandoned them and in a way he begs for his mercy and salvation. We see that the psalmist asks God to remember his covenant and also to deliver them from their enemies. And in this way we see that he describes their suffering and asks God to intervene and save them from their plight. Now in the following verses in verse 17 to 22, once again, we see that the psalmist will emphasize their loyalty to God and the righteousness of their cause. He will remind God that they have not turned away from God and have remained faithful even in the face of persecution. And it is at this moment that the psalmist also declares that they have not forgotten God's name and that they have not worshipped other gods. Finally, in verses 23 to 26, we see that the psalmist will end the psalm with a plea for God's mercy and deliverance. He will acknowledge that only God can save them from their enemies and therefore he begs God to intervene. And therefore the psalm ends with the psalmist declaring his faith in God and his hope for salvation. Now as we have reflected and meditated and heard the psalm in detail. Let us now close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sins. He has taken away all our sins and has given us new life. Lord, as you have given us the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and to protect us. For all the blessings and graces that you have showered on us, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We bless you. You have protected us and you have guarded us all through the night. And you have, you have given us this morning hour. You have given us good health of mind and body. For all these blessings, Lord, we praise and we thank you. And we ask you that whatever activity we may do today, that you may always be there with us, guiding us, protecting us, leading us at every step of the way. And now, my dear friends, let us spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on the psalm, and trying to see what verse touched us. Try to recall 
or recollect a thought that touched you and that will help you to make this psalm personal all of us can relate to the psalm as all of us have gone through difficult moments in our lives how can the psalm help us to change our attitude how can the psalm help us to still grow in our faith and trust in the lord let us spend a few moments and let us ask the lord for the grace that our faith may be strengthened that when there are troubles and challenges in our lives we may place our faith and trust in him Pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince. of the heavenly host by the power of god thrust into hell satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls amen act of adoration o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude pray for souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine son Jesus in union with the masses said throughout the world today. for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen